After the Ontario and Riverside tracks were shut down, stock car racing fans in Southern California were left without a world-class motorsports facility. That is, until California Speedway opened its doors about six years ago. And boy, let me tell you, was it ever worth the wait. Although it's only been around for a few years, the track has already made its mark on the American racing scene. In addition to hosting NASCAR events, California Speedway hosts top-level open-wheel racing and motorcycle racing. The new drag strip and infield road course will attract even more high-profile events to the track. California is a two-mile oval with wide sweeping corners. That wide racing surface means some great two and three wide racing all the way around the racetrack. The banking in the corners is only 14 degrees and long turns with low banking are the perfect recipe for a cooked right front tire. So be smart and try not to overdrive the car into the corners. This is especially good advice when you have new tires because once those suckers wear out, your car will start to push up the racetrack and that will really hurt your cornering speeds here. Okay, let's go for a ride around the California Speedway. As we pass the start-finish line at almost 190 mile an hour, you want to be running in the middle of the racetrack. Near the end of the front straight, bring it up to the outside wall and lift all the way out of the throttle as you hit the darkened racing groove. Right after you come off the throttle, carefully roll into the brake about a quarter of the way. You only need to brake until you've got the car set to turn into the corner. As you approach the first caution light after the beginning of the groove, work your car down to the apron line. As you pass the light, you should be off the brake. Let the car coast as you get to the apron line. As you get to the apex of turn one and two, you'll be going right around 150. Get back into the throttle just enough to keep a gentle climb and speed until you're about halfway through two, when you'll want to be back to full throttle. Coming off of two, your momentum will bring you out to the wall. If you've done well, the car will stop drifting just short of it. You should hit the back straight at around 165 or 70. Stay close to the wall at full throttle all the way down until you reach the groove entering turn 3. You should top out at about 190 miles an hour. When you hit the groove, quickly roll out of the throttle and put on just enough brake until the car feels like it's set to turn. Work your way down to the apron line. Halfway through three, you should be getting back into the throttle and trying to maintain a speed of 150 or so. At the apex, you're at full throttle. The car will start to drift out to the wall as you exit turn four. Again, if you've done it right, the car will stop drifting just short of the wall. You'll hit the front straight at around 165. Maintain full throttle and work the car to the middle of the track as you approach the start-finish line. Here it is again. Best laps here will be just over 41 seconds. As the tires wear, adjust your braking points to keep the car planted low in the turns. Now keep in mind that although the racing line we just showed you may be the quickest way around, California has a whole bunch of alternate lines that you can take, so spend some time trying to find them. They may not be quite as fast as a main racing line, but they're pretty close and they'll help make passing easier. If you can find a fast alternate line that lets you preserve the right front tire, you'll be in great shape to make the trip to Victory Circle.